The interstellar shuttle descended through the swirling clouds of Delaria, the capital planet of the Galactic Council. From his window seat, Lucas Shaw, a young human recently graduated in intergalactic relations, gazed in awe at the sprawling cityscape below. Neon lights flickered in patterns decipherable only by the locals, and towering structures stretched toward the sky, shimmering with an iridescence unique to Delarian architecture. Lucas was here as a student representative at the annual Unity Summit, a prestigious gathering where diplomats from hundreds of planets convened to negotiate alliances and treaties. It was an event that promised not only to showcase the unity of the galaxy's myriad species, but also to expose the simmering tensions beneath. As the shuttle landed with a gentle thud, Lucas gathered his belongings and followed the stream of delegates through the transport hub. The air was thick with a mix of alien languages and the peculiar sweet scent of Delaria's native flora. Around him, delegates of various forms, from the towering crystalline figures of the Jorax to the small, agile ziblets, moved with purpose, their expressions ranging from eager anticipation to diplomatic indifference. Lucas was met by Dr. Helena Marsden, the lead of the human delegation just outside the arrival gate. Her presence was a comforting reminder of Earth amidst the alien crowd. Lucas, there you are. I trust the journey wasn't too taxing, Dr. Marsden asked, her eyes scanning the young man for signs of travel fatigue. It was fascinating, Dr. Marsden. I've never seen anything like this place, Lucas replied, his eyes still roaming. Delaria has a way of overwhelming the senses. But remember, we're here on business. The summit will be challenging and our agenda is packed. Your speech will be one of the highlights and it's vital you make the right impression, she said, leading him through the bustling hub to the maglev that would take them to the council headquarters. As they settled into the maglev car, Lucas pulled out his data pad, reviewing the notes for his speech one more time. Dr. Marsden watched him, a mix of concern and pride on her face. Keep in mind, Lucas, that while you represent Earth's youth and vitality, the diplomats here are seasoned. They value stability and predictability. Your message needs to resonate without unsettling the delicate balance we've worked hard to maintain. Lucas nodded, understanding the gravity of his role. He was not just a representative. He was an emissary of Earth's future. The challenge was to present a vision that was both progressive and palatable to an audience of vastly different beings with their own agendas and histories. The maglev glided silently through the city, and as the towering headquarters of the Galactic Council came into view, Lucas felt a surge of responsibility. The next few days would determine much about the future interactions between Earth and the Galactic community. It was an opportunity to make a difference, not just for his home planet, but for all beings seeking a voice in the vast universe. As they disembarked, Dr. Marsden placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. You're ready for this, Lucas. Just speak from the heart. Lucas took a deep breath as they approached the grand entrance, the massive doors opening to a new chapter in his life and perhaps in the history of interstellar relations. Inside the Galactic Council's headquarters, the atmosphere was a blend of solemnity and splendor. The architecture was a testament to Delarian craftsmanship, with vaulted ceilings and walls that seemed to be woven from light itself. The Grand Hall, where the Unity Summit would officially open, was a vast arena encircled by balconies for each species delegation, each designed to cater to the various environmental needs of its occupants. As they entered, Lucas and Dr. Marsden were greeted by an array of diplomats and officials. The diversity was staggering, beings covered in shimmering scales, entities composed of pure energy, and robotic forms all moved with a sense of purpose. Lucas felt a mixture of excitement and nervousness. Each step took him deeper into a world far beyond the familiar classrooms where he had prepared for this moment. Dr. Marsden led Lucas to the human delegations area, where they settled in among their colleagues. The room gradually filled with a low hum of conversation as delegates exchanged greetings and preliminary discussions. The summit commenced with the ceremonial ringing of the peace bell, a tradition held sacred by the Delarians. The sound was a harmonious tone that seemed to vibrate through the very structure of the building, silencing the crowd and marking the beginning of the proceedings. One by one, leaders from the major star systems took to the podium. A representative from the United Systems, a coalition of human-inhabited planets, spoke of strengthening trade relations and shared security initiatives. The ambassador from the Zeltrax Confederacy discussed technological advancements and their potential applications in medicine and agriculture. 
Each speech painted a picture of a cooperative and forward-looking galaxy. But Lucas sensed the underlying tensions, each leader subtly pushing their own agenda under the guise of unity. Finally, it was Lucas's turn to speak. The young human stepped up to the podium, his heart racing as he faced the assembly. The hall fell into an anticipative silence, the diverse crowd's attention fixed on him. He cleared his throat, beginning with the customary salutations in several intergalactic languages, a gesture of respect that earned him nods of approval from the audience. Esteemed delegates, Lucas started, his voice steady despite the flutter in his chest. I stand before you not just as a representative of Earth's youth, but as an advocate for a vision that extends beyond mere cooperation. Lucas's speech tactfully acknowledged the contributions and aspirations of the various civilizations represented in the hall. He spoke of Earth's recent struggles and triumphs, weaving them into a narrative that highlighted resilience and innovation. As we navigate the complexities of interstellar diplomacy, let us also consider the challenges we face at home. On Earth, we are learning that true progress cannot be achieved without addressing the needs of the many, not just the few. Today, I urge this distinguished assembly to look beyond economic and technological exchanges. Let us commit to a coalition that prioritizes the well-being of all our citizens, ensuring that no entity, no planet, no species is left behind. Lucas's words resonated through the hall, some delegates nodding in thoughtful agreement while others shifted uncomfortably in their seats. He concluded, Our diversity is our strength, and our unity can be our legacy. Let's strive not just for a coalition of planets, but for a symphony of civilizations, each contributing to a greater harmony. As Lucas stepped down from the podium, the response was mixed. Some applauded, recognizing the boldness of his vision, while others whispered, wary of the implications. Dr. Marsden gave him a small, reassuring smile, proud of his performance, but aware of the ripples it had caused. The second day of the Unity Summit brought a deeper dive into the substantive issues facing the intergalactic community. Panels and breakout sessions filled the schedule, and Lucas was slated to participate in a discussion about intergalactic humanitarian efforts and ethical governance. As the panel commenced, Lucas sat alongside several influential figures, including Tehran, a senior diplomat from the Cerulean Empire, and Mi Lo, an advocate from the Non-Centralized Planets Alliance. The discussion was moderated by an AI construct designed to neutrally navigate the complex topics. Lucas listened intently as Tehran spoke about the challenges of implementing universal ethical standards, his voice a deep rumble that resonated even through the translator device. While we respect the ideals of universal rights, we must also consider cultural relativism. What is deemed ethical on one planet may not align with the customs and traditions of another. Tehran explained, his tentacles gesturing to emphasize his points. Melo, representing smaller, less influential planets, added, And let's not forget the practicalities of enforcing these standards. Many of us lack the resources of larger systems. Our focus is survival, not compliance with distant ideals. When it was his turn to speak, Lucas took a moment to gather his thoughts. I understand and respect the complexities each of you has presented. However, we must also recognize that without a foundational commitment to certain universal standards, we risk perpetuating injustice and inequality, Lucas argued, his voice steady and compelling. He continued, On Earth, we've seen the consequences of ignoring the plight of the vulnerable. Our history is marred by our failures, but it's also defined by our ability to learn and adapt. I propose we consider a flexible framework for ethical governance, one that respects cultural differences but also establishes clear benchmarks for the welfare of all beings. The room was charged with a mix of approval and skepticism. Lucas's suggestions pushed the boundaries of the current political dialogue, challenging each delegate to reconsider their positions. As the session ended, the discussion spilled out into the hallways. Lucas was approached by several delegates, eager to discuss his ideas further. Among them was Vara a representative from a matriarchal society known for its progressive policies on social welfare. Lucas, your thoughts on a flexible ethical framework are intriguing, Vara said, her luminescent eyes reflecting a sincere curiosity. My system might be interested in exploring this with you. We value progressive change, especially in terms of social justice. Encouraged by Vara's interest, Lucas felt a surge of hope. Perhaps his vision could take root, one conversation at a time. The day progressed with Lucas engaging in numerous discussions, 
each offering a chance to refine and advocate for his ideas. The challenges were daunting, but the young human was undeterred, driven by a conviction that the summit could be a turning point, not just for Earth, but for lesser-heard voices across the galaxy. As evening approached, Lucas returned to his quarters, exhausted but exhilarated. He had sparked a dialogue that could potentially lead to meaningful change. However, he was also acutely aware that not all were in favor of his approach. Whispers of dissent and discomfort had reached his ears, a reminder that his path would not be without obstacles. Yet as he looked out at the stars from his window, Lucas felt a deep connection to the vast, complex network of life spread across the cosmos. Tomorrow would bring another day of challenges and opportunities, and he was ready to meet them with the same fervor and determination. The third day of the Unity Summit began with a palpable tension in the air. News of Lucas's proposals and the discussions they had sparked were now circulating widely among the delegates. Some viewed his ideas as a breath of fresh air. Others saw them as naive and potentially disruptive to the delicate balance of interstellar politics. Lucas, aware of the growing scrutiny, prepared for a day of strategic meetings. He was scheduled to meet with several key delegations who had expressed interest in his framework for ethical governance. However, he also knew that opposition was forming, spearheaded by those who felt threatened by his push for change. As he walked into the conference room for a private meeting with delegates from the Outer Rim territories, Lucas was intercepted by Cottrell, a seasoned diplomat from the Zeltrax Confederacy. Cottrell's species was known for their meticulous nature and conservative stance on galactic issues. Young man, Cottrell began, his voice low and stern. Your ideals, while commendable, could lead to unrest. We have worked hard to maintain stability. Your proposals, though well-intentioned, might undo centuries of diplomacy. Lucas met Cottrell's gaze, his resolve firm. With all due respect, Ambassador, stability shouldn't come at the cost of progress. We need to be brave enough to address the real issues facing our communities. Poverty, injustice, and the marginalization of lesser systems. If not now, when? Cottrell's eyes narrowed, the ridges on his forehead tensing. Be cautious, Mr. Shaw. Not all are as receptive to such radical changes. You risk not only your own position, but also the peace we currently enjoy. The warning was clear. And as Cottrell walked away, Lucas felt the weight of his words. The summit was not just a battleground of ideas, but also of ideologies, each with its own champions and detractors. Despite the warning, Lucas proceeded with his meetings. His discussions with the Outer Rim delegates were productive, and they expressed a cautious interest in exploring his ideas further. However, the atmosphere was charged with an undercurrent of unease. News had spread that a formal debate on his proposals was to be held the next day a session that would likely define the course of his initiatives and possibly his future in interstellar diplomacy. That evening at a formal dinner, the tension reached a new height. Lucas entered the grand dining hall, the murmur of conversations ebbing as he passed. Seated at the center table, Lucas tried to engage with those around him, but the responses were polite yet distant. Halfway through the dinner, an unexpected ally emerged. Milo, the advocate from the Non-Centralized Planets Alliance, raised her glass in a toast. To Mr. Lucas Shaw, whose courage to speak up for the voiceless challenges us to be better, may we all strive to be as bold in our pursuits. The endorsement from Milo, respected for her advocacy and wisdom, shifted the mood slightly. Some delegates nodded in agreement, a few clapped, while others remained noncommittal. But the gesture fortified Lucas's resolve and reminded him that he was not alone in his quest for change. As the dinner concluded and delegates dispersed, Lucas knew the coming debate would be a crucial moment. It was no longer just about presenting ideas, but about rallying support and navigating the intricate web of galactic politics. The morning of the debate dawned clear and bright on Delaria, its skies a swirl of vibrant colors a stark contrast to the somber mood that Lucas carried with him as he prepared for what might be the most significant moment of his career. The Grand Hall of the Galactic Council was set up like an arena today, with delegates taking their seats in a circular fashion around a central speaking area where the debate would be held. As Lucas entered, he felt the eyes of hundreds of delegates on him, their gazes mixed with curiosity, skepticism, and in a few cases, outright hostility. He found his place and waited for the session to begin, trying to steady his nerves and focus on the points he needed to drive home. The president of the council, a dignified figure from the planet Corellia, 
opened the debate with a reminder of the Council's commitment to respectful and constructive discourse. Today we discuss proposals that could reshape our approach to interstellar relations, she announced, her voice echoing through the chamber. Let us engage with open minds and a spirit of cooperation. The first to speak against Lucas's proposals was Cottrell, who reiterated his concerns about potential instability and disruption. While we recognize the noble intentions of Mr. Shaw, we must proceed with caution. Our primary duty is to maintain harmony and order within the Council's jurisdictions. Rash actions, even if well-intentioned, could lead to unintended consequences. When Lucas took the podium, the hall quieted, all attention fixed on the young human who had dared to challenge the status quo. Thank you, Ambassador Cottrell, for your insights, Lucas began, his voice calm and clear. I share your commitment to harmony and order. However, I also believe that true harmony comes from justice and inclusivity, not from silence and compliance. Our proposals are designed not to disrupt, but to enhance our union, making it stronger by making it fairer. As Lucas spoke, he laid out his vision for a framework that balanced respect for cultural differences with the enforcement of universal rights that protected all citizens across the galaxy. He talked about Earth's history, its struggles with inequality, and its efforts to create a society where every voice could be heard. We have learned from our mistakes, he explained, and we believe these lessons can help us build a better future for all our planets. The debate continued, with several more speakers taking turns to voice their support or concern. Just when it seemed like the opposition might dominate, a delegate from a small, often overlooked planet called Severick stood up. This was Mav, a young leader who had been moved by Lucas's passion and vision. Esteemed colleagues, Mav began, his voice resonant in the large hall. I represent a planet that few of you might consider significant, but today I stand with Lucas Shaw because his vision is one that speaks to all of us on the fringes, those of us who hope for recognition and equality. His framework gives us a voice, and I urge you all to consider the impact of embracing these changes. Mav's speech seemed to turn the tide. Following his words, several other delegates from smaller or less influential planets began to express their support. They spoke of their experiences and their hopes for a council that represented not just the powerful, but also the marginalized. As the debate drew to a close, Lucas felt a cautious optimism. The support from unexpected quarters had given his proposals a fighting chance. The council president called for a recess before the voting would begin, giving delegates time to consider their positions based on the day's discussions. Lucas stepped down from the podium, his heart lighter than it had been all morning. Milo approached him, a smile breaking through her usually impassive facade. You did well, Lucas. Whatever happens next, you've started something important today. The delegates reconvened in the Grand Hall the atmosphere charged with anticipation. The debate had stirred a broad spectrum of emotions and thoughts among the assembly, and now, as the time for voting approached, a sense of decisive momentum filled the air. Lucas stood with Dr. Marsden and other members of the human delegation, watching as the council's officials prepared the electronic voting system. This system was designed to ensure transparency and immediacy in the results displaying each vote in real time on the large screens around the hall. The president of the council took the podium once again, her presence commanding silence across the bustling room. Delegates, she announced, we will now proceed with the voting on the proposals presented today. Each delegation has one vote, and the results will be displayed as they are cast. Let us proceed with respect for the democratic process that binds our diverse galaxies together. One by one, the names of the planets and their representatives appeared on the screen, accompanied by their votes. The tension was palpable as each yes or no added to the growing tally. Lucas watched, his heart racing with each flicker of the screen. Dr. Marsden stood by his side, her hand reassuringly on his shoulder. As the votes were cast, a pattern began to emerge. Initial results seemed to sway against Lucas's proposals, with several powerful planets casting no votes. But as more votes came in, especially from the smaller or less influential planets, the tide began to turn. Yes votes started to accumulate, reflecting the sentiment Lucas had hoped to inspire among those who felt underrepresented. Lucas's pulse quickened as the final votes were cast. The screen showed a near-even split, with just a handful of votes left to determine the outcome. The room held its breath, the silence a stark contrast to the earlier debates and discussions. Finally, the last vote appeared on the screen. Yes, 
from Vara's matriarchal planet, known for its progressive stance on social issues. A cheer erupted from Lucas's supporters, a wave of relief and celebration sweeping over the hall. The final tally confirmed it. Lucas's proposals had passed, albeit narrowly. The results were a testament to the coalition of smaller planets that had seen in his vision a hope for a more inclusive and equitable future. The president of the council acknowledged the results with a nod. The proposals have been accepted. This marks a significant shift in our policies and priorities. Let us all commit to implementing these changes with the spirit of cooperation and mutual respect that has always been the foundation of this council. As applause and cheers filled the hall, Lucas felt an overwhelming sense of accomplishment and gratitude. He had come to the summit as a young representative, uncertain of the reception his ideas would find. Now, he stood as a catalyst for change, embraced by a new alliance of planets ready to challenge the old ways. Dr. Marsden congratulated Lucas warmly. You've done something remarkable today, Lucas. You've shown that even the newest voice can resonate deeply when it speaks truth to power. Lucas smiled, his fatigue replaced by a newfound energy. Thank you, Dr. Marsden. It feels like we're just getting started, doesn't it? The day concluded with conversations about next steps and implementation, the summit buzzing with a renewed sense of purpose. Lucas was at the center of it all, discussing, planning, and networking with his new allies. The victory was not just a personal achievement, but a promise of broader horizons for the interstellar community. The aftermath of the vote was a whirlwind of activity. Delegates from across the galaxy approached Lucas, eager to discuss the implications of the new policies and how they might be implemented in their respective systems. Lucas, despite the exhaustion that tugged at his bones, found himself invigorated by the interactions, each conversation fueling his hope and determination for the future. In the corridors of the Galactic Council headquarters, informal meetings sprouted like blossoms in spring. Lucas and his new allies from various planets huddled together, sketching out plans on digital pads and through holographic interfaces. They discussed strategies for rolling out the new ethical standards and ensuring that the smaller systems received the support they needed to comply without strain. Dr. Marsden watched Lucas with a mixture of pride and concern. Make sure you take a moment for yourself, Lucas, she advised during a brief pause in the meetings. You've accomplished a lot, but the real work starts now. Lucas nodded, aware of the magnitude of the task ahead. I know, Dr. Marsden. I just want to make sure we have a solid plan in place before we all head back to our corners of the galaxy. As the summit neared its conclusion, a final session was called to outline the next steps. The council's president addressed the assembly, her voice echoing solemnly through the hall. We have witnessed a historic shift in our policies today, thanks to the brave voices like that of Mr. Shaw. It is now our duty to ensure these changes are implemented with fairness and diligence. Lucas was invited to speak once more, this time to offer closing thoughts. Standing at the podium, he looked out over the sea of faces, some familiar by now, others still inscrutable. Thank you, Madam President, he began. Today we laid the groundwork for a future that I believe can be brighter and more just for all our peoples. It will require effort and compromise, understanding and patience from each of us. But I am confident that together we can achieve something remarkable. The closing ceremony was filled with a sense of accomplishment, but also an understanding of the challenges ahead. Diplomats and delegates exchanged contact information, promising to continue their discussions and cooperation. As the summit officially ended, Lucas found himself surrounded by a small group of young delegates from various planets who had been inspired by his courage and leadership. What's next for you, Lucas? One of them asked, a young Vinorian who had been particularly active in the discussions. Lucas smiled, his mind already racing with possibilities. I'm planning to visit some of the Coalition planets, starting with Vara's home system. We've got a lot to learn from each other, and I think seeing things firsthand will help us move forward more effectively. The group nodded, their faces alight with enthusiasm. They were the new generation of leaders, now bound by a shared vision for change. As Lucas finally headed back to his accommodation to prepare for his journey back to Earth, he felt a mix of exhaustion and elation. The summit had not only tested his convictions but had also strengthened them. He knew the road ahead would be fraught with obstacles, but he also knew he wouldn't be walking it alone. That night, Lucas packed his belongings his mind replaying the events of the past few days. 
He was returning home not just as a delegate who had made a successful proposal, but as a leader who had sparked a movement. The weight of this responsibility was daunting, but Lucas felt ready. After all, this was the mission he had signed up for, to make a difference one voice at a time.